Grief etched itself onto Maria and Peter's faces as they visited their son's grave daily, the weight of his tragic accident heavy on their hearts. A month passed, and a curious detail emerged. Each day, a fresh rose adorned his headstone, a silent tribute left before their arrival. A mystery bloomed alongside the roses. Who was this secret mourner? Before we embark on this captivating journey, we kindly invite you to show your support by engaging with our content. Please consider giving this video a thumbs up, subscribing to our channel, and leaving a thoughtful comment stating, I've subscribed. Additionally, if you find this story as inspiring as we do, don't forget to share it with your loved ones. Your support means the world to us. Determined to unravel it, Peter devised a plan. He discreetly placed a camera, hoping to capture the enigmatic visitor. The screen flickered, a pop-up window blooming on the monitor. Maria and Peter exchanged a glance, a flicker of hope sparking in their grief-filled eyes. A single click of the play button could finally reveal the secret visitor who had left a trail of red roses on their son's grave. The loss of Michael, their 18-year-old son, had ripped a hole in their lives. A car accident, a cruel twist of fate, had left them clinging to each other, adrift in a sea of sorrow. Their once vibrant home felt hollow, their savings drained by funeral costs, a bitter price for laying him to rest. Yet, amidst the pain, a promise bloomed, to keep Michael's memory alive. Every day became a pilgrimage to his grave, a ritual of shared stories and fresh flowers. It was their way of staying connected, a fragile bridge between their world and his. One Monday, however, a new element disrupted their routine. A single crimson rose lay nestled on the headstone, a silent tribute not from their hands. Confusion clouded their faces. Who would leave a flower on their son's grave? A search of the surrounding plots yielded no clues, no other roses disrupting the serene order of the cemetery. The initial surprise morphed into a quiet curiosity. Each time a rose withered, a fresh one mysteriously appeared. It became a silent conversation, a puzzle with no answer. Months bled into one another, the roses a constant presence. The mystery gnawed at their hearts, a flicker of hope battling the ever-present grief. One day, Peter, his eyes gleaming with a newfound determination, proposed a plan. Cameras. Discreetly placed, they could finally unveil the identity of their anonymous visitor. Maria, ever cautious, raised a skeptical eyebrow. Privacy laws, Peter she countered. But Peter wouldn't be deterred. He craved answers, a resolution to the enigma of the roses. That night, fueled by a relentless curiosity, he set out for the cemetery, a hidden camera his secret weapon. Back home, a charade of sleep hid Maria's own burning desire to solve the mystery. She wouldn't admit it, but the unknown visitor had piqued her curiosity as well. The click of the play button hung heavy in the air, a promise of a revelation to come. The charade continued. For two weeks, Maria and Peter maintained their daily visits, their eyes darting nervously towards the hidden camera. Maria, ever the pragmatist, kept her suspicions about Peter's clandestine act to herself, reveling in the thrill of their shared secret. One Tuesday morning, however, their routine shattered. A call from the cemetery warden sent shivers down their spines. Apparently, someone had complained about the camera, forcing its confiscation. The warden, recognizing Maria and Peter, explained filming required consent, and after finding the footage focused solely on their son's grave, she had no choice but to involve the police. However, knowing their story, the warden offered a silent act of kindness. Although the police held the camera, she discreetly made a copy of the footage for them, her cryptic comment, I thought you needed to see this, hanging heavy in the air. Relief washed over them, momentarily overshadowed by a new fear. What did the warden see on the recording? Could it shatter their carefully constructed memories of Michael? They spent the rest of the day in a state of anxious anticipation, finally retrieving the recording later that afternoon. The exchange with the warden was brief, polite inquiries masking the churning emotions beneath. 
As the warden turned to leave, she handed them the USB stick with a final loaded statement. I thought you needed to see this. Back home, the weight of the recording settled in their hands. Her words hung heavy, a premonition of a revelation. Fear and a strange reluctance tangled with their burning curiosity. What if the truth on that tiny device changed everything? Unable to bear the suspense any longer, they decided to wait until morning, the USB stick looming on the kitchen table like an unopened birthday present. The morning sun crept in, illuminating the small device. With breakfast half eaten, Peter spoke, his voice trembling. Do you think we should do it, Mary? Is it worth watching? Mary, reading his apprehension, offered a reassuring hand. Let's watch it together, she said softly, the tension easing from his shoulders. Together they sat, hands clasped, before the laptop. Peter plugged in the USB, the screen flickering awake. A pop-up window bloomed, taunting them with a single button. Play. The answer to the mystery of the red roses was just a click away. The first few minutes of the video were a frustrating blur. The camera faithfully captured the stillness of the cemetery, devoid of any movement within its limited view. Doubt gnawed at Peter and Mary. Had their hunch been wrong? Was the camera malfunctioning? Then, a flicker at the edge of the screen. A figure, clad in black, materialized from the periphery. The grainy footage offered no clear details, only the silhouette of a visitor approaching Michael's grave, a single red rose held reverently in hand. The placement of the flower was visible, but the face of the visitor remained frustratingly obscured. A jolt of recognition jolted Mary as the figure finally moved away. They knew this woman, undeniably. But how? It had been over a decade since their paths last crossed. A torrent of questions swirled in their minds. What brought her here to Michael's grave? What secrets did this silent vigil hold? Unable to bear the weight of unanswered questions, Mary declared her need for immediate contact. Something significant, something unexplained, lay beneath this clandestine ritual. Their problem, however, was formidable. Time had severed their connection to the woman. No mutual friends remained, leaving only one risky gambit to return to the cemetery, to wait, and to hope for a repeat performance. It was a long shot, but the unexpectedness of the outcome surpassed even their wildest imaginings. Upon arriving at the cemetery, they found the superintendent already standing by Michael's grave. Had she seen the footage as well? Curiosity danced in her eyes as she inquired about their discoveries. The couple, eager for answers of their own, bombarded her with questions. Did she know the woman? Regretfully, the supervisor shook her head, admitting to seeing the stranger only on these regular visits. Her surprise was palpable when Peter revealed their connection to the mysterious visitor. Why hadn't they simply contacted her then? The supervisor wondered, a touch of exasperation in her voice. Opting not to pry deeper into their family dynamics, she left them to their vigil, unaware of a silent witness. Unbeknownst to Peter and Mary, the supervisor's curiosity had gotten the better of her. She feigned a departure for her office, instead choosing to conceal herself behind a nearby tree, a silent observer to the unfolding scene. The wait stretched on, the silence punctuated only by the distant sounds of the cemetery. Then a car pulled into the parking lot. They paid little attention until the door creaked open and a woman stepped out. Even from afar, recognition was instant. Time seemed to rewind as they saw her approach, a lone red rose mirroring the single blossom captured earlier on video. The woman moved with a determined quiet, her head bowed as if guided by an invisible hand. But when she finally lifted her gaze, the scene froze. The three of them stood transfixed, locked in a silent tableau. No words were spoken, no movements made, only the weight of the past hanging heavy in the air. The cemetery manager watched, her heart twisting in her chest. Would this unexpected reunion spark a fight, a tearful breakdown, or worse? Would years of unspoken emotions boil over? 
Just as her anxiety threatened to overwhelm her, Mary took a hesitant step forward. But to the manager's surprise, a smile bloomed on Mary's face, tears brimming in her eyes. She spoke, her voice thick with emotion. Noah? The woman Noah mirrored Mary's surprise. Their eyes locked, a silent conversation unfolding across the space between them. Peter, too, moved forward, his arms outstretched in a tentative embrace. Noah hesitated, years of uncertainty coloring her features. Then, a slow smile tugged at the corner of her lips. She walked into Peter's embrace, a silent sob escaping her. The tension dissipated like mist, replaced by an aura of relief and unspoken forgiveness. Witnessing this emotional reunion, the cemetery manager felt a pang of guilt. Intrusion turned into a desperate need to understand. Stepping forward, she cleared her throat. Mary and Peter turned, their faces a mixture of surprise and guardedness. Excuse me, the manager began, her voice soft. I, I couldn't help but overhear. Why the secrecy? Who is Noah? The question hung heavy in the air. Mary and Peter exchanged a glance, Noah's eyes mirroring their confusion. Mary started to speak, then stopped, overwhelmed. Noah, however, seemed unfazed. Perhaps it was the years of carrying the burden of her choice, or maybe the relief of the reunion. I'm their daughter, she said simply. The revelation struck the manager speechless. This wasn't a long lost friend or lover, but their own flesh and blood. Confusion clouded her features. But why the camera? Why the secrecy about visiting the grave? Noah's voice held a tinge of sadness. I ran away when I was a teenager, she explained. After years on my own, I finally found the courage to reconnect. But so much time had passed. I wasn't sure if you wanted anything to do with me anymore. Her voice trailed off, doubt creeping back into her eyes. That's why I came to Michael's grave. It was the closest I could get. A wave of understanding washed over the manager. The red roses, the silent visits, it all clicked into place. Mary and Peter, their initial apprehension replaced by a wave of relief and love, rushed to embrace their daughter. The years of separation melted away, replaced by the joy of a family reunited. Tears flowed freely, apologies murmured and promises exchanged. As they stood in a circle, a family finally whole again, the cemetery manager retreated. The weight of their story settled on her, a reminder of the power of forgiveness and the enduring love between parents and a child. It was a secret no longer, replaced by a future filled with healing and a shared journey of honoring Michael's memory.